have a batch toolpath already created and it's simply a case of changing the type of machining from 3D offset to raster and recalculating so if we look down from above and switch off the part now we can see we have the raster scans where the 3D offset was previously now if we take a look in this steep region here here we have a, a vertical sidewall and if we attach the tool to the end of the raster scan and we spin the part round slightly we can see that that tool is rubbing against that vertical wall and there's a potential for us to leave a mark on the surface on that steep region so ideally we would like to move that tool away from that wall slightly to, pre to prevent that uh, dwell mark or rubbing, rubbing mark of the tool up against the, the vertical wall so in the next tool path we're going to look at we can actually specify a wall clearance for the raster strategy so when we choose raster an extra set of options appear on the left here if I go back to 3D offset you'll notice those options disappear if I change it back to raster we have an extra set of options on this extra page we can specify a wall clearance I'm going to leave it at the default of 0.5 and at this stage we can also specify a manual angle for the raster scans or an auto angle in this case we're using a manual angle of 180 degrees okay so already we can see a slight difference we can see a definite space between the toolpaths if we draw the old the previous toolpath on top of that you can see how much further the raster scans go so now if we attach our tool to our new toolpath with the wall clearance and look from the side you can see we have the half a millimeter gap specified if we draw the leads and links on this toolpath you'll notice that we've set the cutting direction to be climb only that is both for the steep regions and the shallow regions now quite often we would want to use a climb only convention when we're cutting the steep regions with the side of the tool uh, but 